Tonight, Yahoo makes some big mobile money. Microsoft kicks Nokia to the curb. And how Nielsen is bringing its ratings to all corners of the web. Tech News Tonight is next. This is Twit. This is Tech News Tonight, episode 198 for Tuesday, October 21st, 2014. This episode is brought to you by Squarespace, the all-in-one platform that makes it fast and easy to create your own professional website or online portfolio. For a free two-week trial and 10% off, go to squarespace.com and use the offer code TECHNIGHT. Hello, everybody. I'm Sarah Lane. Good to have you here. And let's get right into today's tech feed. Goodbye, Nokia. Hello, Microsoft Lumia. Last month, Microsoft kind of hinted at plans that they were going to kill off the Nokia and Windows phone brands. And it looks like it's official, at least on the Nokia side. Microsoft Lumia is the new brand name that will replace Nokia for Microsoft's devices. This follows a transition from Nokia.com over to Microsoft's new mobile site. And Nokia France is the first of many countries that will change over to Microsoft Lumia as official brands on Twitter and Facebook and other public accounts. Microsoft has confirmed that to The Verge. But it's not like you're never going to hear the name Nokia again. The company still exists, a separate company. It's still based based in Finland, just without a phone business. The company now focuses on mapping and network infrastructure. Existing Lumia devices carry the Nokia logo at the front and back typically, so Microsoft could opt for just Lumia or Microsoft at the front of the back or Microsoft Lumia as a combination. It remains to be seen. Speaking of mapping, though, Nokia has launched a beta version of its Here Maps app, which is pretty widely regarded as being pretty good, for Android today that can be installed on most Android devices and compete with Google Maps itself. Nokia launched a version of Here on Samsung's own app store a couple of months ago and is also the mapping technology used by Amazon's Fire Phone. The company is making a version available now to every Android user. The app isn't available in the Google Play Store officially yet, though, so it means non-Samsung Android users will have to sideload it or wait a bit longer. Here also used to be in Apple's app store, you might recall that, but was abandoned without much explanation why during the transition to iOS 7. Oh, the old days. Speaking of days, earlier today, the Washington Post reported that the new Spotlight Suggestions feature in Apple's OS X Yosemite and iOS 8 had begun automatically collecting the locations of users and whatever queries they were typing when searching for files. Not surprisingly, a lot of people panicked. It's a privacy problem, right? Apple responded in a statement today clarifying how Spotlight Suggestions work and that, quote, when you use Spotlight, your search queries, the Spotlight suggestions you select, and related usage data will be sent to Apple. Search results found on your Mac will not be sent. If you have location services on your Mac turned on, when you make a search query to Spotlight, the location of your Mac at that time will be sent to Apple. Searches for common words and phrases will be forwarded from Apple to Microsoft's Bing search engine. These searches are not stored by Microsoft. Location search queries and usage information sent to Apple will be used by Apple only to make Spotlight suggestions more relevant and to improve other Apple products and services. It works a bit like Siri, if I'm understanding Apple correctly. I'm Moore's Renee Ritchie also points out that there's a Spotlight suggestion checkbox so that anyone using the device can turn it off if they value privacy and security over convenience. And if a user has already disabled location services, Spotlight honors that setting and doesn't send anything. I think it's safe to say the panic may have been unwarranted. People love to panic. All right, it's your weekly dose of major security breach. And this time, we might have to blame Staples as in the large office retail chain, Staples. Krebs on Security reports that more than half a dozen sources at banks operating all over the northeastern coast of the U.S. say that thieves have succeeded in stealing customer card data from some subset of Staples locations, including seven Staples stores in Pennsylvania, three in New York, at least three, and another in New Jersey. The fraudulent charges occurred at other businesses like grocery stores and, and large retailers, which points to possibly an issue with Staples cash registers themselves, with card stealing malware, possibly letting thieves create counterfeit copies of cards that then customers swipe at compromised payment terminals. Staples says it is investigating a potential issue and has contacted law enforcement. Today, Nielsen announced that it's expanding its television rating system, which, if you work in the business like I do, is not always perfect, but that's the one we have. 
to multiple kinds of digital content to give both creators and advertisers on the web better popularity metrics. And Nielsen is partnering up with Adobe to do it. The new online traffic measuring system is designed for comparing, say, an online video to a podcast about the same subject to an article written about that subject. Unlike television or radio, the internet is obviously multi-format. So the aim of Nielsen's new ratings is to figure out what in general people care about online. Many TV networks have already signed up. ESPN, Univision, Sony, Viacom, and Turner Broadcasting among them. Coming up on TN2, print a 3D gun, get some prison time? It has happened, and we will tell you all about it. And after the break, CNET News' Seth Rosenblatt joins us to shine some light on how Yahoo's latest earnings point to its future. But first, let's thank Squarespace for sponsoring this episode of Tech News Tonight. It's the all-in-one platform that makes it easy to create your own professional website or online portfolio. Squarespace has beautiful designs, 25 templates for you to start with. Get yourself going or, or, or make no changes to it all. They're lovely. 25 of them. And Squarespace evenly recently added a logo creator tool, which is quite a bit of fun. If you want something that defines you, you don't know how to make your own logo, I certainly don't. You Let Squarespace make it for you. They've got some really great ideas. Squarespace is easy to use. You almost need no help at all. But let's say you want to get crazy. You want to do a little customizing. Maybe you're not super well-versed in, in blog creation. Squarespace has live chat and email support 24 hours a day, seven days a week. You'll always have somebody ready to help you. Now available for all subscription plan levels is e-commerce. So you can accept donations. You're a nonprofit. You want to raise money for your wedding registry. You're, you're putting together some sort of a, a school fund drive. You're raising money in some way. That's all built in. Plans also start at just $8 a month and include a free domain name if you sign up for a year. Squarespace has two apps that are great. The metric app for iPhone and iPad allows you to check your site stats and unique visitors and those sorts of metrics. And the blog app actually lets you make text updates and, and add images and even change layouts and monitor your comments as you go about your day. Hosting is included. Squarespace takes care of the hosting so you don't have to. It's an all-in-one solution, and that's why we like Squarespace so much. Start a free two-week trial right now. No credit card required. Just start building your website. See what you can put together. I bet you can put something really nice together in very little time and feel pretty good about your, uh, your, 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 your website. When you decide to sign up for Squarespace, make sure to use the offer code TECHNIGHT. That's T-E-C-H-N-I-G-H-T to get 10% off and, of course, to show your support for our show. Thanks to Squarespace for their support of Tech News Tonight. Two-week free trial. Use that offer code TECHNIGHT. A better web awaits, and it starts with your new Squarespace website. All right, joining us now is Seth Rosenblatt, senior writer over at CNET News. Hi, Seth. Welcome back to the show. Hi, Sarah. How's it going? It's going really well. Um, I know that you were following uh, Yahoo's uh, latest earnings report, which beat Wall oh, yes. Street expectations. Uh, yep. You know, we could throw out a bunch of numbers. Uh, revenues, including acquisition costs, were, uh, uh, you know, just over $1 billion. Stock was up. Yawn, 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 yawn. yawn. I guess, you know, in general, it is, it is, especially considering so many people still use Yahoo products, uh, use yeah. Yahoo Mail, you know. Do you? It, well... <laughs> yes. In fact, I had to remember what my Yahoo password was the other day to sign into my Flickr account. Uh, How which exciting. I, which I figured out eventually. But Mar Marissa okay. Meyer said in the earnings release that in, in the third quarter, which was their latest quarter, uh, the mm -hmm. company saw mobile revenues in excess of $200 million, um, and, and, that and, right, and right there, that's actually, right there, full stop, that's the interesting story. They've never reported their mobile revenues before. Mm. Ever. So right there to me, that's like, whoa, they realized, or at least she realized, that they've got to do something to keep these activist investors who are begging for a merger with AOL of all companies right. uh, off their back. And by putting out mobile numbers for the first time, that's one way to keep them at bay since the Alibaba IPO has now happened and they are about to get a massive cash windfall. Well, now, okay, so let's talk about the Alibaba uh, IPO, which got mm -hmm. Yahoo, because Yahoo uh, dumped a, a bunch of Alibaba stock that it had, about a little over $5 billion. I think, uh, I think the company 6 has about... 6.2 was the last I heard. 6.2, okay. So over yeah. six, $6 billion then. 
think mm-hmm. Yahoo has, you know, somewhere around 12 billion cash on hand. Okay, mm-hmm. well, that looks great. So that's where you get the activist investors who start, you know, breathing down your neck, right? Yahoo's mm-hmm. got all of this money. Yahoo has yep. made a ton of acquisition and kind of aqua hire uh, um, uh, buys over, you know, since since the time that, uh, that, that, that Meyer stepped into the CEO role, but pretty small companies, I think about 30 companies overall. No mm-hmm. huge business big mergers or, or 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 really much change to what we would still consider Yahoo's core business. What do you think it's going to do with all that money? Oh, that's a great question. Uh, and if I had any uh, real deep insight into Yahoo, I'd be in a different line of work. <laughs> um, uh, I, I can say this, that, that uh, Mayer uh, detailed a little bit about their acquisition strategy during the earnings call. Uh, she didn't really go too deep into it, but she did say that when they buy a company, they look at, at one of three things. They look at whether the company is going to give them talent. Uh, you know, whether it's an acqui-hire situation. They look at whether it's building towards a future development. And they look for sort of these larger strategic partnerships that are, you know, where they wind up absorbing the company. Um, and that sort of takes us to the uh, bright role situation, uh, which uh, Yahoo is rumored to be in talks to buy for $700 million, mm-hmm. this uh, video ad company. Now, this is some bright role would be considered a Google competitor. I could see where that would be uh, lucrative for yeah. Yahoo, especially since yeah. especially since Yahoo is 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 clearly, uh, you know, touting its mobile numbers and, and talking about uh, I know Meyer said uh, that she expected gross revenues in mobile to exceed one point two billion in revenue over the over the next year. Does, does uh, no, by, by, by the end of this year, by the end of this oh, year, by the end the, of this year. Yeah. Interesting. And the interesting thing and the interesting thing there is that, uh, yes, she expects mobile rev to be one point two billion by the end of this year. However, that's one point two billion before traffic acquisition costs, which are the uh, the fees that uh, Yahoo must pay its partners for sending traffic to Yahoo. So one point two billion sounds great, but we don't know what the actual number is going to be. Um, and this actually sort of gets back to the whole uh, mobile revenue problem. Uh, wonderful. Yahoo finally started talking about what its mo- mobile revenue is like, but they didn't actually give out any numbers from previous years. So we have no idea what this is in reference to. Um, the, their, their mobile rev could be uh, great year over year. It could be slipping year over year. It could be flat. We've got no idea. So... Back to the, you know, the, the activist investor uh, story that, you know, Yahoo mm-hmm. could, could possibly merge with AOL. I know AOL, for their part, have said merging with Yahoo is not in our plan, which is, it's, I guess, uh, some form of a denial, at least for now. Right. Does it make any sense to you? I mean, is, is Yahoo, you know, maybe it doesn't merge with AOL, but, you know, does it, does it, does it sell itself? Does it, does it split off into a variety of companies? Yahoo does quite a few things that don't seem very cohesive. And sure. I have been waiting for, you know, the the, the appointment of, of Marissa Meyer to somehow change that. And I don't, I don't feel any differently. I, I don't really think that's going to happen. Um, one of Yahoo's, you know, a lot of people... Uh, in various cognoscenti roles, look at it as as a negative, perhaps. But Yahoo is is one of the few internet companies that's very heavily invested in media, um, and and media production. Uh, there, you know, Yahoo News is a phenomenally large driver of of uh, traffic to news stories um, and to its own news stories. Uh, they've made high, pri- high <coughs> excuse me high profile hires over the past few years. Um, I don't really see them getting rid of any of that anytime soon. Uh, for internet companies, they're they're quite unique in that role. What do you think about some of Yahoo's? You know, I, I would almost say legacy companies. Legacy as mm. as, as in they, they've Yahoo has owned them for more than a couple of years. You've got Tumblr. Tumblr's still still kicking around. Uh, you know, the numbers mm-hmm. numbers look pretty good. Uh, sure. Flickr just got its first uh, native iPad app, uh, which I sure. which I was pretty impressed with. I have to say, even though it's, they're a bit late to the game, but hey, <laughs> better it, late than never. Exactly. So. As far as some of Yahoo's, what we consider sort of core products that pe- that people do enjoy and and have a lot of users, what do you think happens to this stuff? Do they do they stay with Yahoo? Does it make sense? Oh, I, I don't. I can't see Yahoo spinning off any of those uh, properties. But I, I'm not uh, uh, a very 
a longtime Yahoo observer. Um, but I just, I, I, I just can't see it. Um, and, and more importantly than whether or not I see it, uh, nobody today who, who uh, has been writing analysis pieces about Yahoo uh, or the analysts who spend a lot of time looking at their financials, uh, nobody talked about uh, spinning off Yahoo News or Yahoo Sports or, or uh, any of these other properties. So uh, for now, I think the big news is that uh, the combination of the Alibaba uh, windfall and the revelation of mobile numbers has bought uh, Marissa Mayer a lot more shopping time. Um, she's got a, a bit of breathing space to figure out what else she can do at Yahoo uh, before the investors start uh, crawling up her, uh, her back again. What would you buy for, oh, I don't know, let's say I said... You got about five billion dollars to play with. What do you, what do you think? Yeah, what, what do you think? Yeah, would be a good acquisition for Yahoo or a good partnership? Oh God! Not to I put no you idea. on the spot or anything. I have Seth. no idea. I have no idea. <laughs> yeah. I'm, I'm, uh, like I said, if I if I had really good insight into those things, I'd be in a different job. <laughs> Maybe Snapchat, right? Yahoo's already investing into Snapchat, isn't that right? Maybe they could just all all out buy it. Snapchat didn't that, want to be part of exactly. Facebook. Maybe Yahoo makes more sense in a world where basically nothing makes sense anymore. <laughs> right. At least when we get into Snapchat conversations. Seth Rosenblatt is a senior writer over at CNET News. Thanks for joining us, Seth. And let Thank folks you, know where they can keep up with your work. Uh, you can follow me on Twitter at Seth R. Excellent. Thanks so much for joining us. All right. Thanks, sir. Finally, we mentioned 3D printed guns in jail. 28-year-old man has been sentenced to two years in prison in Japan for manufacturing plastic 3D printed firearms in violation of national weapons laws, which are notoriously very strict in Japan. This is according to the Japan News. Yoshitomo Imura is accused of creating at least two plastic guns at his home in Japan that are capable of firing bullets. Imura is now the first person in the world known to have received a jail sentence for making 3D printed firearms, even if nobody was hurt. He was previously arrested back in May after posting videos and blueprints of his 3D printed weapons online. At the time, police reportedly seized five plastic weapons from his home. You might recall the first 3D printed firearm with firing capabilities was demonstrated back in early 2013, almost two years ago, by Defense Distributed out of Austin, Texas. Be careful. Careful with your 3D printers, everybody. And that's it for this edition of Tech News Tonight. You can subscribe to the show at twit.tv slash TN2. Please do if you like the show. Get it automatically every day. Write us at TN2 at twit.tv with any feedback you might have. And don't miss our morning news program, Tech News Today. Leo Laporte will be hosting it tomorrow, and I will be hosting Thursday and Friday mornings, 10 a.m. Pacific, 1 p.m. Eastern, just this week only. I'm Sarah Lane, and I'll see you also on Tech News Tonight tomorrow. Thanks for watching. Bandwidth for Tech News Tonight is brought to you by CashFly.com.